Dear Marvel Animation, bring back Spectacular Spider-Man. Please. Well, especially after X-Men 97, I'm like, Spectacular deserves it. Like, like more, I'm gonna say. Guys, I am Merlin. I'm Thomas. We are the Comic Lads, and today we're gonna be talking about our undying love for the legendary show, Spectacular Spider-Man. But before we get into the actual nitty gritty of why the show needs to make a freaking historic comeback, Please guys, it would mean the world if you would like this video, subscribe, turn on notifications, we do weekly videos, we love interacting with you guys and sharing in the comic love. Also before we get into it guys, question of the week for you, who is your favorite Spider-Man voice actor? Because there have been so many, there's Josh Keaton, Christopher Daniel Barnes, uh, Neil Patrick Harris, which is insane. Un underrated voice actor. Very so, underrated yeah. Spider-Man. Uh, there's Drake Bell. There's, uh, there's a bunch <laughs> of others, you know? <laughs> Do we have to bleep out his name if we sing <laughs> it? I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> but yeah, let us know, guys. You brought up the success of X-Men 97, yes. and I think that's a really great starting off point for this. This show has just, like, taken the world by storm. Yeah. Recaptivated audiences from, like, decades ago at this point. Spectacular Spider-Man is a show that, if you've watched it, you know how special it is. You do. It deserves the treatment that X-Men 97 got so much. Imagine we got Spectacular Spider-Man with a crazy animation budget back. That would be amazing. I have a question for you, though. Okay. Because I know a lot of people, you guys clicked on this video, and whether you've seen the show or not, maybe you're of the opinion that instead of Spectacular Spider-Man, we should get the 90 Spider-Man show back. Listen, what do you think of that debate? I would watch Spider-Man 98 in a heartbeat. Me too. I would. That show also got 65 episodes. Yep. And then, like, chose to end on, like, the most nothing storyline ever and, like, where's Mary Jane? You know, like, I think Spectacular Spider-Man deserves it 10 times more. That show in its golden age is, like, great, but it also got to the point where it, I'm gonna say... It I'm overstayed already, its it, welcome. It overstayed its welcome. You know, yeah. we got into the whole clone. We got into, like... Spider-Verse. Yeah, we got into a Spider-Verse light of that era. Era, yeah, it got a bit cluttered and I feel like for what it is. It's great It is and it's already explored so much of the spider-man mythos Spectacular spider-man is like an IP that I feel it just like barely tapped into it's the potential It's like begging to keep getting adapted and like we we never got to see any other Marvel characters in it, you know and like in our last video We talked about just the potential for Marvel animation mm. And we even referenced this show specifically and we said that there are so many villains that they were able to introduce in the The 26 episode that they have but even with the amount of villains they had there are still so many more to explore in this universe Universe. That already got teased because, like, they were like, no, for sure we're gonna get season three, right? They had a whole overarching story where we'd go from Peter in high school, finishing those high school years to going to college, and then some seasons with him even as an adult. What is it about Spectacular Spider-Man that you think is, like, so notable? This is what Marvel is supposed to be. It just has that feel of, like, Oh, I instantly know I'm in New York and I'm reading a fucking Marvel story. And it cares about the long run. Yeah, that's such a great point. I, I, and it, it towed the line so beautifully of like individual pocket stories that could stand alone. You know what I mean? Even just still lay crumbs for future episodes. Exactly. And they always like, Ugh. they just find all these ways to connect it in such like engaging ways without losing the heart of that individual episode story. Do you know what I mean? It's just, I don't know. It's 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 kind of lightning in a bottle where I, I don't understand how they were able to juggle like 30 characters an episode and like see things like, bro, I rewatched episode one the other day. It's 20 something minutes and they introduce you to Peter, Gwen, Harry, Aunt May. Flash. They, Flash. Yeah. Like they tease the fall formal. We meet Eddie Brock. We meet Kurt Connors and we see that like he's dealing with the lizard DNA. We meet Hammerhead. We learn about the big man. Oh, you we also meet fucking Sandman and Sandman Rhino, Rhino before they're even criminals. Exactly. They're, they're just like low level petty thugs at that yeah. point. You meet the enforcers. Yeah. You get a tease of who the who, who's the big man, you yeah. know? And still it, it doesn't feel cluttered the episode. No, you it's know? 20 minutes. It's oh, perfectly and paced. And Vulture's the main villain. Yeah. And, and you meet Otto. Yeah. How do you do that? I mean, season two had so many teases of future villains to come. 
I think that's a great point for us to talk about what kind of villains would we want to see if the show continues. Should we just get into the nitty gritty? Let's get into it. All right, so first, we're just going to talk about briefly the villains that were already teased in season two that would have appeared in season three. Come on, guys, just bring it back, please. First, we got the Jackal, yeah. which, like, also kind of worries me. <laughs> because yeah. I'm like... Is that any, like, please don't do Clone Saga? Please don't like, do Clone If you're going to do clones, like, make it one episode, like, two max... Another character, though, that they kind of very briefly tease and kind of like what we were saying before, laying down just like a little character visual hint, you know what I mean? And that is Carnage. Cletus Cassidy actually appears in one episode. He's like in a straight jacket, no, and that. Yeah. Uh, and that mental hospital. And I love his design. And I just like fantasize, dude, about what he would have been <laughs> like as Carnage. Because, like, the show had such a great balance of tones, but I would have loved to see, like, a kind of more psychotic, like, sadistic character in the show. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Like, everyone in the show has their own kind of selfish motives. It would have been nice to see someone purely driven by, like, anarchy and violence. You know what I mean? I would love that. Another villain that I'm, like, itching to see. I don't even know if we could, like, it's not that much of a villain. Kind of like an anti-hero, maybe like a criminal. Hobie Brown joins Pete's high school. And if you guys don't know who Hobie Brown is. Hobie Brown is the original Prowler. We could have got Prowler, dude. That would have been sick. And I love that, like, with Spectacular specifically, they have such great storylines where Peter's personal life and hero life kind of clash yeah. and him being a classmate of Peter's could have had such great tension and storytelling. In terms of overarching stories you mentioned beforehand i didn't even think of it but kingpin would be crazy and the reason why is that at the end of season two there's kind of a power vacuum left over from tombstone going to jail yeah they kind of tease that hammerhead is looking to take up the reins yeah but you know hammerhead like hammerhead's cool yeah but he can't handle the show he's not own. he's not capable he's not I mean? kingpin and you can't mention kingpin without thinking about daredevil surprise i'd want to see daredevil in introduced into this I'd universe love to see daredevil we got two beautiful beautiful seasons of just spider-man he's new york's only hero i'm not saying let's make season three the mcu and he doesn't have to like overstay his welcome in more no. than like an episode i'd say agreed and with the inclusion of kingpin and the kind of power vacuum storyline that we're talking about it could be really cool if both sides of kingpin and hammerhead recruit different villains just like oh, in the yeah. comics you know what i mean kingpin always has a certain mercenary or assassin that he relies on to kind of do the dirty work we could have the inclusion of Bullseye as a little, you know, minor tease there with Daredevil as well. Oh, yeah. We could have Alistair Smythe for, like, the 90s fans, the 90s Spider-Man anime show fans. You know what I mean? We could see a little bit of a team up between him and Kingpin again. I would love that. We could have Scorpion because where the hell was Scorpion for those two seasons? Agreed. And most of all, we could definitely see a Hobgoblin storyline attached. Oh, because. He's one character that, oh, if you guys haven't delved too much in the comics, is very closely related with Kingpin and his kind of, you know, criminal empire. We could even see John Jameson become a uh, man-wolf, you know, for an episode. That would be so fun. <laughs> if we want to. Yeah, know? a good Halloween episode. Maybe Morbius makes an appearance oh, in there. Oh, that would be... It would be so sick. I'd love to see Morbius, dude. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Madam Web. <laughs> uh, yeah, as Dakota Johnson. <laughs> imagine <laughs> and we can also you know see a bunch of returning villains that's the beauty of superhero storylines you know villains come they go they return but spider-man the beauty of all the characters attached to him is that he doesn't just have great villains he has great heroes and great personal relationships with you know the people that are important to him in his life yes if you guys have seen spectacular spider-man at the end of season two we kind of are left with a big cliffhanger of will they, won't they between Peter and Gwen. Yes. I think what could be super cool is that the next season, I don't think him and Gwen should get together until the very end. Yeah, not at the start for sure. But I think one of Peter's coping mechanisms maybe could be retreating into a chaotic love interest romance with Black Cat. Yeah. You know what I mean? And kind of going deeper into his Spider-Man side of things to cope with the fact that he can't be with Gwen as Peter. Maybe Felicia can enroll in their high school but like she just doesn't see Pete, you know? Like she doesn't care at all about Pete because she likes Spider-Man. She's all over him when he's Spider-Man, but then when he's Pete, he's invisible. Yeah, and then he can even reveal it to her and they can kind of play off the comics where she's like, well, now the illusion's kind of broken. Yeah. Like, I'm not into you as much, you know? Yeah. Or she, or it could be like Ultimate Spider-Man where she like Vomits throws on up him. on him. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine, I love that. Bendis so is such a sick fuck. He's, he's disgusting. <laughs> yeah. What do you see as like 
the overarching like theme with Peter because we were kind of talking about it before and we were mentioning that the first two seasons are really like him learning about the power and responsibility theme of things you know what I mean and I think that theme will always stick with Spider-Man but like what what kind of overarching storyline do you want to see with him he just barely realizes his love for Gwen at the end of the show I really want him to embrace it and kind of just fight to be with her yeah you know it's great will they won't they for the first two seasons but after those two seasons you're kind of like pete can you stop being a fuck i know and just be with this girl who loves you and who like you clearly love also i know and that's that's what's so frustrating about rewatching the show and getting to the final episode yeah and this always happens with me or i think i've rewatched the show probably like five times at this point well, it's only like 26 episodes i know but every time i rewatch it I don't realize that I'm at the end until I'm at the end. And you're and I'm fucking like, pissed. And I'm pissed, yeah. dude. Can we just get together? Yeah. And so I think the next season, if they did bring it back, would be the perfect, perfect time to see them together. Oh, yeah. And it could also lead into a really great fourth season with Death of Gwen at the end. Where she croaks. <laughs> Damn. I think the main arc that I want Peter to go through is for him to just kind of grow up. Yeah. Because maybe it'll, it might even be like his last season in high school, you know? Yeah. Like, I feel like he could graduate at the end of the season. There's so much left to be fleshed out. Guys, guys. bring it back. I know, we need it. We Please. need it. And if you guys are convinced, then you haven't watched the show. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, just throw it on. It'll take you like three days to watch it. And once you start, you can't put it down if you like, like Spider-Man at all. This is going to be a crazy take. This is the best on-screen Spider-Man ever for me that's like the coldest take of all time is like, it yeah. you, you guys let us know is that a hot take or not i don't know well bro what's the better on-screen version toby like probably best out of the movies andrew no tom no definitely not josh keaton is like he's the kevin conroy of spider yeah a hundred percent we want to start a little campaign we want to get people hyped about the possibility of spectacular spider-man coming back and there was actually an online petition that was created, I think, a few years ago, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was while. like, I, I'm not sure the exact num a number, we'll put it here, but it has a substantial amount of s signatures. Go over there. We've signed it already. Sign it yourself. You know, let's let's get some hype back into Spectacular Spider-Man and the possibility of it returning with Marvel Animation. Yeah, and, and the biggest way, like, sign the petition for sure, but the biggest way you can let these Disney suits know that we want the show back mm -hmm. is to go on Disney Plus and watch it because that's why they brought X Men back because when they started Disney Plus everyone watched X Men yeah you know more than so. more than spectacular and Avengers but yeah guys join hands with us as we pray for the return of this show please Donald Trump it. bring Spider Man <laughs> <laughs> but yeah guys let us know if you've watched Spectacular Spider Man let us know is it your favorite version of Spider Man like it is us if not who's yours. Let us know if you want them to bring it back just as much as we do. Who would you like to see in the show? What villains? Maybe what heroes even? Mm -hmm. Like, comment, subscribe, share this video with your friends, and we'll catch you in the next one. Peace out, everyone. Love you.